Okay, we have today an integral with the floor function in it. This one's from MIT Integration B 2023 quarterfinals, round four, problem three. We have the integral from zero to one of the floor of the square root of one plus one over x dx. Now to get started with it for the floor function, usually what I wanna do is break up the bounds where they're just separated by an integer. But we already have that, we're just going from zero to one, so I need to look at this more closely. I think what I wanna do is get a feel for some of the values. Just like, let's just start plugging in values into this. Let's kind of call this thing here f of x, just what's inside the floor function. And because we have one over x, I think we're gonna be interested in like the reciprocal values. Like we're gonna be interested in like one half, one third, one fourth, one over 72. But first let's look at the endpoints. Like for f of one, you plug a one in here, you're gonna have square root of two. That's something around 1.414, I think. Now for f of zero, that's kind of a problem as we're dividing by zero. But if we look at this more, if we look at like, if we look at this like a limit as x is going to zero, then what happens is this is going to infinity and the whole thing is going off to infinity. So then let's look at that. Let's look at f of one half. You plug one half in there, you're gonna get two. You're gonna get the square root of three. And the square root of three is something like 1.732. And this is where it gets kind of interesting because everything is in the floor. So for this f of one for this f of one value, we we're at one point four one four. If we take the floor of this, it's going to round it down to one. But the same thing is true here for this f of one half value. The floor function just rounds us down to the next highest integer. So again, this is going to be one. But if we look at f of one over three, plug that in. That's going to become a three here. Plus one is four. Now square root of four is two. But if you take the floor function of this, f of one third, this is still two, because when you add an integer and you round down, you're just still at the same integer value. So in order to find a nice way to break up this integral and simplify it, I need to find the integer values. I need to find these change points like this one third, this is gonna be one of them where it changes. But I need to find all those values or a way to define it. Well, what we can do is say, I want square root one plus one over x to be some integer value n. And then I just need to solve for x. If we square both sides, we have one plus one over x equals n squared. Subtract one on both sides. Take the reciprocal and we have x equals one over n squared minus one. So what we can do is just take this equation and start plugging integers in for n and getting out x values that we can use to break up this integral. Okay, so we have our table over here. I'm starting at two, but if you start at one, you're dividing by zero. So let's just start plugging in values. You plug a two in, the first value is what we just found a minute ago. One third is gonna be a good place to break this up where we get an integer. You plug a three in, you're gonna get one over eight. Plug a four in, you get one over 15, one over 24, and one over 35. And then from here, we've got our integral going from zero to one. I wanna take this break it up on these x values over here, because if we do that, what's gonna happen is for each integral, this is gonna become just a constant value that's gonna be easy to integrate, and then the whole thing is gonna simplify down to a series. So let's see, first of all, we'll start with this one third, so we're going, instead of going from zero to one, we'll go from one down to zero. So we'll start at one, and the first integral is gonna go from one to one third. And what we found before in this region, everything here is gonna simplify just down to a one. Like when we looked at f of one half, that was one, f of one was one half. So everything here is gonna be a one. And then for this next integral, we'll start at one third and we'll go down to this value, one over eight. And in this region, everything here is gonna to reduce to a two. For example, if you plugged in and say one over four here, you're gonna get the square root of five, which is like 2.2 something. Floor function is gonna round it down to two. And then for the next one, we're going from 1 8 to 1 over 15, and everything here is gonna be three. And this is just gonna continue this way. We'll have an infinite number of integrals and the bounds will eventually approach zero. But what I really wanna do is actually generalize each of these integrals. So in every case, again, we reduce the integral to a constant. So let's call this value n that we're integrating. And then for these bounds, we can represent the upper bound as one over n squared minus one. Maybe looking at like this example, two squared minus one, is gonna give you the three there. And then for this lower bound, I can write it as one over n plus one squared minus one. But now we need to sum up these infinite number of integrals. So let's sum this up. We'll go from, we're summing from one to infinity. 
But there is a little problem with this because you notice if n is one and you plug a one in here, but if you plug a one in here, you're gonna be dividing by zero. So that's not quite right. So what I'm gonna do is let's actually start this at two and then let's just break out that first term separately. Because this integral, I mean, we can just do this one. If you integrate this, you're gonna have x evaluated from one third to one. That's just gonna be two thirds. So let's just pull a two thirds out of it. And then for this integral here, I can just integrate it. So let me, I'm gonna bring the two thirds in front when we do this. So we integrate this and it's just a constant. So we're gonna have nx evaluated from, evaluated from one over n plus one squared minus one to n squared minus one. So I'm just going to, so then let's just evaluate this and I'll distribute in this n. And then from here, all we need to do is just kind of evaluate this messy looking sum. So let me get a little more space and we can finish this off. Okay, now for this sum here, there's quite a few different ways to simplify it. I think what I'm going to do is something really straightforward and just kind of plug in some values and see what's happening. So when we do that starting at two, what we're going to get is this first piece is going to be two thirds. And this here is going to be minus two eighths. And then we'll do it again. And then this first term, when this is a three, we get three eighths minus three over 15. I don't wanna reduce any of the fractions because we're gonna get cancellation here. So the next one, when we have a four, four fifteenths minus four over 24, and this is gonna keep going. But then what I wanna do is just kind of group it this way because we've got the 15s, we've got the everything common denominator, two over eight, three over eight. And I can actually put together the two thirds and so what's gonna happen is now this is gonna become four thirds, three eighths minus two eighths is gonna be plus one eight plus one fifteen. And this is just gonna keep going. It's gonna be the same denominators that we saw on the previous board when we had that table. So it's gonna keep going like this. But for this thing, what I can do is just looking at everything to the right here, we're gonna have four thirds in front, but then for a summation for this, I can write this as the sum from n equals three now to infinity of one over n squared minus one, because you plug a three in here, three squared minus one is eight, and each of these terms is gonna be just one less than the perfect square. But then for this, I wanna write it a little bit differently to try to simplify it more. So this is, I can write this, I can, difference of two squares, I can write this as n plus one times n minus one. But then let's break this up into two fractions and let's avoid the partial fractions. So what I can do to create cancellation, create the n plus one, create the n minus one. If I subtract them, now the numerator is two. Well, we started with one. So if I multiply by one half, now we haven't changed it. And so now we can take this and break it up into two fractions. Cancel the n plus ones here. Cancel the n minus ones here. So we just have ones left in the numerator. So I'll clean this up a little, but then what we're gonna have, this is gonna be a telescoping series and we can just kind of wrap it up by plugging in numbers and canceling things out. Okay, so for our telescoping series, I just started plugging in values and values starting at three and we just went out here to one six, but this is going on to infinity. But what you'll notice is we're gonna get a lot of cancellation because here we can cancel one fourth, here we can cancel the one fifth, cancel the one sixth, the one seventh is gonna cancel with something. Eventually at the end, we'll have terms that don't cancel, but as n's going to infinity, those terms are going to zero. So we don't care about any of those terms on the end. We just care about this one half here and one third, everything else is gone. So let's see if we can put it all together. So we have our four thirds here, one half. Let's get a common denominator here. So this is gonna be three over six. Those, and we'll write this as two over six. But then together, this is five over six. So what we have is four thirds plus five, six times a half is five over 12. Now let's get the common denominator of 12. So this is gonna be 16 over 12 plus five over 12. Add those together, 21 over 12. Reduce the fraction and my final solution to this is just seven over four. Okay, there you go. Really good problem today from MIT 2023. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.